How much would your life change if you knew every single time someone told you a lie? Even if that someone was you. Lies like, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you can't own a business, and you definitely will never make more than you did in your old corporate job. Get ready to be proactive, passionate, productive, and oh so profitable in a way you never before experienced by opening your eyes to the Big Fat Lies Show. Now, here is your host of Big Fat Lies, success sorceress, and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Oh my goodness, happy Monday, happy fun day, happy manifesting Monday today for generators and manifesting generators and that generator world building generator type oh my goodness if you are a generator or a manifesting generator or no one have a manifesting generator or generator child spouse co-worker partner business owner co-business owner with you or you are one <laughs> Oh my goodness, I have so much to share with you. We are going to go flat out for the next 55 minutes talking about what it's like to communicate with the generator energy type, which also includes manifesting generators. So I'm going to be saying generator, but I'm also going to be including you manifesting generators. So the only difference between a generator and a manifesting generator is that manifesting generators have a direct connection to the throat and so as we've talked about in previous shows we manifest through our throat and so having a direct connection to your throat will speed up your manifestation process do you have to have it no are there beautiful benefits to being a classic generator absolutely are there beautiful benefits to being a manifesting gener generator absolutely so some of the things that can happen with generator types is that you feel called to initiate ideas, create products, create programs, create possibilities for others, but you feel burnt out. You feel like you're chasing your tail. These strategies that I'm going to be sharing with you today are all about that. Because a manifesting generator or a generator energy type will do what's called initiation. And so you're not actually here to initiate. So we're going to talk about that today. It's not just like, hey, something came into my head, something came into my heart, and I feel called to go ahead and build this 12-week program or this year-long program or you know, go on this giant odyssey and you weren't initiated correctly by the correct types of people that are here to initiate, <laughs> which is not you, by the way. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's really nothing wrong with responding to your life. Generators and manifesting generators are powerful world builders who have a unique energy that can be difficult to understand and work with if you're not familiar with human design. So powerful world builders. So you're here to do that. And you're here to be deeply, deeply satisfied with the work that you do. You are not here to be idle. You are not here to sit still, really. You are here to be responding. And so how do you respond correctly? We're going to talk about that today. I notice that generators can get caught up in their own ideas, their own initiatives, and this will lead to frustration and exhaustion. So many generators go through multiple burnouts. I have been through multiple burnouts, not approaching my life correctly. And so that's the thing. How do you approach your life correctly? We're going to be taught about that. Today, I'm going to download some stuff from the cosmos. This show is called Big Fat Lies. And what are the big fat lies? This 
These big fat lies are anything that's caught in your consciousness, installed on your operating system that are stopping you from being so happy, so healthy, so wealthy, so switched on and loved in this lifetime on this planet that I lovingly call Earth University. You have incarnated very specifically here for a very specific mission. And so those specific missions show up in your human design chart. You can go to any web browser, any web browser at all, and type in free human design chart, and you put in your birth details, and it will give you the frequency. It will also let you know what your life's mission is. You will have a right angle cross or a left angle cross, and there will be four frequencies there that you are supposed to be living your life through. And so sometimes what happens is people go and they, you know, look at their chart and they're like, oh, I just want to know a little bit more information. And so they get a reading and the reading's like 97 bucks or 197 bucks. And what happens is you have way more questions than answers about your human design. And one of the things that really frustrated me in the beginning of my human design journey is that I would spend some money here and spend some money there and, you know, get a little bit more information or a little bit more and a little bit more information, but I didn't actually get the answers that I was looking for. And so one of the things, if you show up and you watch this show, you know about me is that I am a lifelong master intuitive. I do get answers for you from the cosmos. I have the 48 gate, which is hooked up exactly to the Akashic records. And so that's predominant in my chart. That's something that I can do is I can give you very specific answers according to your chart. And then you can take that information and you can use it to begin to generate a deeply satisfying life. And I will tell you, the more people on the planet who are generating deeply satisfying lives, the better. Oh my goodness. Have you ever noticed that like when you're super happy and you're super satisfied and you're super fulfilled, your radar for the stuff that will take you off on a journey that's dissatisfying is, you know, like it's so accurate. It's so, so accurate. Like the more happy you are, the more unlikely you are to choose stuff that's dissatisfying, to choose stuff that makes you angry, to choose stuff that just like takes you off kilter. However, the same is also true. The more dissatisfied you are, I call it the stank. <laughs> The more dissatisfied you are, the more likely you are to try to choose something, to initiate something that will bring you what you think is going to agree to like wealth or health or happiness or love or satisfaction in your life. But because it has the stank of dissatisfaction on it, it's like you almost can't access it. So that's something we're going to be talking about today as well. I really, 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 really want you to pay attention if you are a generator energy type or you know a generator generator energy type. That's easy for me to say. And, you know, this person is important to you and this person has an impact on your life because there is nothing more powerful than a dissatisfied generator or manifesting generator oh my goodness it's like it's like gonna burn your retinas out you know no freaking fun at all for anybody around them and I would say I lived a lot of my life so dissatisfied so dissatisfied and what happened was because I was raised in a household where you know if you wanted something, you would go and, you know, learn from the best and then just go ahead and do what you think you're supposed to do. Well, here's the thing, generators, you are not here to think. You're not here to think. Like thinking is not important. Even if you're defined in your crown and in your third eye, you're not here to think for 
you. So that's the number one thing that I want to give you today. I want to open up your perspectives too, is that all of the thinking, all of the thinking is for other people. It's for other people. So you're probably thinking, well, how the heck can I get what I want from life? Well, one of the biggest things that generators want from life and they're designed to correctly have and enjoy is deeply satisfying work. So if you don't have deeply satisfying work, then I'm telling you, you got to change your work. You got to change it. And so do you have the ability to work for yourself? is a good question. Do you have the ability to change your work in a way that works for you? Is it so interesting? I have either worked for myself or somewhat been an independent contractor in, I would say, most of my employment. You know, I was just left alone to do the very best that I could. And I would say, you know, like I was thinking of all of these different jobs that I've had over the years where I was like employed. However, I was pretty much an independent contractor in all of my jobs. Like I was there for three to four months and they were having me train people. And, you know, I'm a manifesting generator. So manifesting generators know how to skip steps and what steps need to be skipped. Now, I notice uh, when I was doing my resources, uh, you know, a little bit of research before I, I come on and present to you, um, that the material was talking about missed steps. And I would say, if you are a manifesting generator and you're skipping steps effectively, the steps that you notice that you missed, oh, well, that's just data. That's data, you guys. It's like, okay, well, now I've discovered that that is an essential step. So it might be that it's a 14-step process instead of a 13-step process. But when I started, it was like a 52-step process. And so I would say generators deeply, deeply satisfying work and that you do have to have the ability to affect and generate uh, production and you need to be able to affect and generate a transformation in most cases. And so as a generator, you are a world builder. You are the, you know, building the pyramids and, you know, building something beautiful and elegant and small. It doesn't have to be a giant thing that you're doing. And that's one of the things that I've really been looking at for myself, because I do have the ability to skip steps. I do have the ability to access the Akashic records for other people. Uh, I do have the ability to really just make sense of something that's so sophisticated and so complicated as you, your personality, what you're here to do, what type of business would be good that goes with that. Like there's so much information that comes through in these charts. There's so much information that comes through from the Akashic records for you. And so instead of doing like a data dump, which I would say so many uh, chart readers just give you the data that's in your chart and don't help you make sense of it. They don't bring you on a journey of transformation. And I would say what's really, really important to me is that when I give you the information, I also give you the ability to start to translate that information for yourself in a meaningful way. So it's not just like, hey, you know, here's all of the things at once in a data dump. I'm giving you bite size, plate size, even platter size information that you can then start to extrapolate into your personal life, extrapolate into your business life, extrapolate into your love life. Like what is it that you would love to transform right now? 
And how can I give you that information in a way that is immediately useful to you? So I would join me after the break if I were you. I would also make sure to diarize for 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Mondays to come and join me on the Big Fat Lies Show. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. See you after the break. This is Big Fat Lies with success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to Jennifer at jenniferkramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness, you guys. So if you're listening on the replay, I remind you that this class is live most Mondays. And so you do have the ability to jump on and ask questions about the class ask questions specifically about yourself. And so this is a way of one, getting to know yourself at a deep cellular level and two, getting facilitation from me uh, complimentary. And so do I do that? No, <laughs> only on Mondays. So this is your invitation to join me on Mondays. Uh, and if you're listening on the replay, any questions that you have, whatever platform that you're um watching or listening on. I do have a video broadcast and an audio broadcast. Find me on Instagram, find me on Facebook, find me on TikTok. Those are my top three platforms that I usually am on. So whatever platform that you like, whatever platform works for you, go ahead and ask me some questions. I probably have a show on the thing. I do have a ton of shows available on different topics. Is human design my favorite tool right now? Absolutely it is. Do I have other tools? Oh my goodness, yes. I am an autodidact. I've been learning these transformational technologies. I think I went to my first class when I was like 15 years old uh, for self-development for transformational technologies. And I do remember being a very little kid and like reading the Bible and like reading a bunch of different things, trying to figure out how people work. And I would say that that's one of the things in my incarnation cross, which is called the vessel of love, the vessel of love. And so, yeah, like, how do people love themselves more? How do people love each other more? Probably has been one of my lifelong transformations and lifelong things that I'm very, very curious about. And how to extrapolate that into business? Well, I have been in business my whole entire life. And, you know, lately as a coach and a consultant for small business and for entrepreneurs, and I tend to specialize in STEM. So that's science, technology, technology engineering and medicine so depending on what type of business that you have uh or you if you coach those type of people then this information will be valuable to you so one of the things in this segment i would love for us to embrace is what if you know up until 30 seconds ago all of the sort of dissatisfying ways that you have approached your life what if we just decided that we're going to draw a line in the sand and we're going to step over it as generators? We're going to step over it. So what makes you a generator? So what makes you a generator is that you have an open and enveloping aura. You have an open and enveloping aura. So you're the type of people that when you walk into a room, you transform the energy of the room. And so people may have said that to you like, oh, I'm so glad you're here. I always feel so great when you're here. I always relax when you arrive. I always uh, feel better when I get a chance to talk to you or, um, you know, like your energy comes in the room with you. And so imagine that your aura, you know, is 20 or 30 or 50 feet across. And, you know, whatever the metric conversion is that three or four meters across. And so when you walk into a room, your whole aura fills up that room. And depending on how powerful you are feeling, and depending on how satisfied you are with your life, 
you could fill up a whole football stadium. And how great would that be? Like you think about these people who are speakers or musicians um, or very high frequency beings, people will come to be in that aura. And so do you have to be a manifester to get a full football stadium full of people to listen to you? No. As a generator, as a manifesting generator, depending on your chart, like I would be looking for specific things in your chart to give you clues as to what type of business that you could be in, what type of uh, venues would be appropriate for you and what type of communication would be appropriate for you. But also know that about yourself. Your aura is giant. And so it does have the ability to program the rooms that you're in. So then thinking about how do you feel? Do you feel angry? Do you feel frustrated? Do you feel dissatisfied? Do you feel like a complete piece of beep? And so then you're going into work. You're going into the shopping mall, you're going into meetings with your clients, you're going into maybe even family things. And so you're taking that dissatisfaction with you. You're taking that anger with you. You're taking that frustration with you. If you don't just decide, I'm going to do my life different. So is now a good time to decide to yourself, I'm going to do my life different. And if it is, then great. Continue to listen to this show. Continue to participate with this show. And if it's not, then give yourself a freaking break. You're the only person who can give yourself a break. You are the only person who can decide that you're going to learn how to respond correctly to life and to dump off what I call the stank, you know? Like if you pollute every room that you walk into with your dissatisfied energy, with your frustration, this massive fireball of frustration, then you are the only person who can change that. So how do you change that? So one, you got to choose. You got to choose, you guys. And if you're like, wow, I really do stank up the rooms that I walk into, then it's time to one, discharge that frustration energy. And so we can definitely talk about that. And to start to respond to life respond to life now there's generators and then there's other types of your response mechanism so we're not going to specifically talk about your response mechanism other than I have something called an emotional authority and 50% of the people on the planet have what's called emotional authority so I'm not going to talk about the other authorities Briefly, I'm going to talk about emotional authority because I would say if you are angry, then you are in an emotional response. And so if you're taking that angry stink into your children's lives, into your spouse, uh, into your business, into any public place, um, just don't. Like, give yourself a time out. Give yourself the ability to just stop being angry. Because anger is, I would say, the reason why this world has wars. The reason why people aren't having beautiful, loving relationships. The reason why, you know, so much trauma exists on this planet. You know, it's it's so... Uh, prevalent. And even if you aren't an emotional authority, you are at the effect of emotional people. 
you know, if you don't have your sacral or not sacral, if you don't have your solar plexus does defined, then what can happen is you can reflect and amplify that anger energy. And so even though you're not that, uh, yeah, <laughs> there is a way to be a bit of like a, a matador with that energy where you can just be like, oh, yay, to people who are coming at you with that energy. And it can be playful enough that the, the people get it that they're stanking up the room and uh, that you don't make it a wrongness about them. You don't make them like uh, someone who is um, being called out negatively because that's something, you know, kindness is how we can e e approach ourselves and approach others. However, again, you know, anger is not for you. Anger is not for other people. Anger is data. So thinking about that for yourselves, are you actively discharging your energy? Are you aware of how sort of frustrated you are? And can we just draw a line in the sand and leave your frustration behind, leave your emotional response behind? And if you can't, then there needs to be some very, very specific discharge energy that happens. And the reason why is because your general freedom on this planet has to do with how correctly you are responding to your life. And so at the beginning, I was really having to fall in love with making people wait for me. Falling in love with making people wait for me because I am an emotional generator, an emotional manifesting generator. And so if I was like super excited about something or super dejected about something and anywhere in between, I was not in a position to make a choice. So I'm 50 shades of gray, 50 shades of magenta, 623 shades of black. 627 shades of red like I am the full spectrum experience and so for me to fall in love with making people wait was my ability to take space for myself to take space to make correct responses and so the correct response for me is from a place of calm I'm like, hmm, do I have the energy for this? Mm -hmm. Do I have like the talent for this? Mm -hmm. And just like so relaxed, so relaxed and not from proving, not from like, ooh, you know, chess playing, you know, you're just not here to do that generators. You're not here to prove. You're not here to chess play. You're here to build. You're here to deeply, deeply enjoy your work, to be so freaking satisfied at the end of the day. Ah, oh, so freaking satisfied at the end of the day. And that's what the whole world is asking for from generators. I mean, it's a huge, it's 70% of the population are generators. And so what would the world be like if these people were so deeply satisfied, like just purring like a cat? at the end of the day, because they are doing the work that's deeply satisfying to them. Wow. What would that be like? It would be so freaking gorgeous. So more on, yeah, generation, generator satisfaction. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Please join me after the break. The show is called The Big Fat Lies, and we are on the Inspired Choices Network. Join me after the break. Do you want to know what the biggest, fattest lie is in the whole world? Jennifer Kramer Lewis has discovered after working with hundreds of conscious, heart-centered entrepreneurs that they believe in the lie that if you work harder, smarter, and faster than everyone else, only then will you be rewarded with success. Jennifer audaciously stakes claim that what is pleasurable for you will always be your direct route to the big bucks. Jennifer knows working this hard is robbing you of your dream life. What would you say if she gave you the keys to the Ferrari called your correct energy? What would change if you had a burnout-proof business plan 
a juicy switched on energy field calibrated by correct business practices, as well as Jennifer's success sorcery, deep psychic awareness and support. The investment for this process is one six what Jennifer's VIP level clients pay. Why? Jennifer believes that once you have this information, you become limitless. And that's exactly what this planet needs more of. Choose your limitless life and business at 888.jennifercramerlewis.com. That's 888.jennifercramerlewis.com. And we are back. So before the break, we were talking about how your aura generators has the ability to program the room that you are in. Did you hear that? Your aura has the ability to program the room that you are in. So if you're walking into the room, you're already super frustrated, you're already super dissatisfied, you have, you're hangry, <laughs> you're stanking up the room, this is a huge missed opportunity massive massive like a big freaking mistake like I'm thinking of that meme where um uh Julia Roberts from Pretty Woman where she walks into the store and she's all dressed up so beautifully because Richard Gere has taken her for a shopping spree and she's got her beautiful clothes on now and so she walks into the old boutique and she's like big mistake massive and she holds up all of her bags uh because the people were working on commission and they re refused to serve her. So thinking about that for yourself, you guys, your aura is here to serve you. It's also here to serve the people that you're here to serve. So you think about like an infinity loop. So when your aura is programmed to the frequency that you're here to be and do, which will be your personality sun, in your human design chart. And, you know, there's a bunch of different things that we're looking at, but I would say when you are correctly calibrated and you are super freaking satisfied, you are like a sexy purring cat about all of this, then people are like, who the heck is that? That is so deeply sexy. I want to know what that person is doing. I want to know what that person is about. And people will come to you, generators. You know, you walk into the room, you program it with your beautiful self-satisfied energy and people are like, oh my God, whatever that person's doing, I freaking want it. I want it. But you cannot have that, generators, if you are frustrated. And if you haven't discharged your frustration, if you haven't discharged residual anger, if you haven't discharged residual trauma, like there's so many different things that I recommend in my coaching practice. I, uh, one of the things that I have in my chart is the 14 in my culture. And I just know so many amazing, talented people. And so at the top level of my business, I, am saying to my clients, okay, I think you need a session with this person. I think you need a session with this person. And then it's under my umbrella that we are having these additional practitioners in on your transformation, because it really does take a village and generators. If you have the ability to program the entire village, as you walk into the long house or the round house or whatever it is, your culture, temple, mosque, and, you know, have those people lean into you, have those people really want to do business with you, have your energy completely correctly calibrated, it's, it becomes ease, it becomes easy. But like me, you have to fall in love with waiting. You have to fall in love with being deeply honest with yourself. You know, you don't take anger into your business. Like if you need to go and chop down a tree or you need to throw yourself in a lake in March or February in order to be able to discharge your frustration, in order to be able to discharge anger 
or angst out of your body so that you can be clear, then you need to be able to do that. And am I recommending that you try to do that by yourself? No. Am I recommending that you try to do it without access to your Akashic records? No. Am I recommending that you try to do it without responding? Because you're here to do something called responding to life. Now, responding to life is not initiating. It's not getting things out of your head and then trying to initiate them. It's not. It's basically almost like sitting on a park bench waiting for someone to initiate a conversation with you, waiting for someone to specifically ask you a question. Now, are you sitting there doing freaking nothing? No, there's other things that you've been initiated into that you can be working on generators. And the sacral response is something that we also need to talk about, you know, because people can ask you questions. Your coach can ask you questions, yes, no questions, light and heavy questions, uh-huh and uh-uh questions. You know, like also uh, for generators, you may be able to sway test things, strength test things, and, you know, really get into a place where you know that you are responding. And then that reinitiates some of the things that you have been initiated into. You know, just for example, you know, my coaching practice, my mentorship practice, I ask that business questions every freaking day. And if I don't get their responses, I'm asking my mentors, my coaches uh, to give me generator type yes, no questions to really respond to, to make sure that I am in the correct business. Because at any time, maybe being a coach and a mentor, maybe being a success sorceress isn't for me anymore. Like I'm, I'm always really, really Buddhist beginner's mind about my business. And I recommend that you generators, especially be very, very Buddhist beginner's mind about everything that you're doing, because when you are in the correct energy, you are so, so sexy, so sexy. And people are like, Ooh, I want that. I want that generator energy. I want that person to help me generate my life. And so you can be co-opted. You can be enslaved into helping people generate their lives instead of you generating your life. And it, it doesn't have to be instead of it really doesn't because if you are correctly calibrated and you know how you plug into the other person, and that's something we definitely talk about in, um, in my mentorship, in my one-to-one, -one, we can even put it into your limitless uh, and plug you into the other people in your life. We can do something called a pentachart with your family and really start to, uh, make educated decisions, make clear-cut choices about which part of your family, which part of your business that you're going to invite to come into other parts of your life, and which people are perfectly great leaving them doing what it is that they're doing, and you just move ahead and do what it is that you're doing, if that makes sense to you. Like, I can notice that people have yeah, they have preconceived notions about, oh, well, you know, of course my partner should be involved in my business. Of course I should consult with my lover about where my business is going. Uh, who says? And <laughs> who asked? And so there's lots of big fat lies around that that I would love to draw your attention to. And it is in your chart. It's in your Akashic records. It's like so obvious to me about what parts of your life that your lover or your partner or your children can be involved in and which, part, which parts of your life that you are meant to be generating by yourself. You know, obviously with the people that you're here to be generating with and for, because it's never a solo mission for a generator or a manifesting generator. 
It's not a solo mission, guys. And I would say, you guys hear me say this all over the place, but for any self-made millionaire or self-made billionaire, they have strategically forgotten or maybe consciously or unconsciously forgotten about strategic introductions and people that they have worked with over the years. You know, super, super important for generators and manifesting generators to know that it's never a solo mission. They do need people to ask them questions. They do need people to initiate them into different directions. And if they don't, it'll fall flat. You're going to skin your nose. And, you know, again, we talked about it earlier, the ability to just forgive yourself and recalibrate yourself and, you know, notice when you're angry, notice when you're frustrated and have those coping mechanisms, those discharge mechanisms so that when you go back into your business, when you go back into your personal life, that you are not stanking up the room. The energy that you are bringing in is clean, it's pristine, and it has the ability to be programmed with a deeply satisfied aura. You know, like how cool is it to be with people who are deeply satisfied by their life. Oh, God, for me, I just freaking love it. You know, I am a two four. So that's the hermit opportunist. And so I don't have a giant circle. But one of my gold standard friendship rules for myself is to be around people who are deeply satisfied with their lives. And if my friends, you know, need to you know, have a moment where they stank up the room. We do have the ability to do that with each other, but it's usually for a minute. And then it's like, okay, cool. Would you like me to ask you some questions? And the answer is usually yes. Uh, or do you need to just vent? And in most cases, my gold standard friendships, they're like, oh, I, I hate me right now. <laughs> Can you please ask me some questions? I need to like transmute the stank. Hashtag transmute the stank. Yeah, so really, really important for your gold standard friendships, for the people who are in your life day to day, to really not give you a whole lot of rope for you to stank up the room generators, because you do have the ability to do that with your beautiful giant generator aura. So for more on this, for more on accessing your generator deep satisfaction, please join me after the break. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis, and this is the Big Fat Lies Show. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Big Fat Lies with success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to Jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness, you guys, welcome back. So, in this segment, I want to talk about communicating correctly to generators and manifesting generators. So this, if you are a manifesting generator or a generator, I want you to have a look at this for yourself because I would say once you know the correct way of receiving communication, of asking to be communicated with effectively, you know, you can program the room. You can also ask for what you need, ask for what you want. And then also notice what you're responding to. Like notice what you're responding to. And if what you're responding to is deeply frustrating for you, you do have a choice. You can just wait 
and not respond to it. And even if you have to like count to 2000 before you give yourself permission to not respond to the things that are deeply frustrating to you. It was funny. I was talking to my show producer and somebody asked me the most stupid question today. Just unbelievably stupid question today. And there is this like, it's so passive aggressive. I fucking love it. There's this website called, let me Google that for you. And so if somebody asks you a question that they can Google themselves and they're expecting you to be, you know, their servant or whatever, uh, you could let me Google that for you and then send them the website with the response. But you can also just not respond. So one, give yourself permission to not respond to the things that are deeply frustrating to you. And when you are communicating with a manifesting generator or a generator and you're bringing them something that you know will piss them off or you know will require them to have some sort of an energetic response, which could include anger, it could include grief, you could make them cry, you know, you could make them have any sort of an emotional wave whatsoever. Then, if you're communicating with them, then you need to give them space to have their response. So whatever their response is, you know, their response could be yelling at you. Their response could be crying. Their response could be anything. And so when you're communicating with a generator energy type, whatever their response is, is correct in the moment because you have initiated them into a response. So one, take responsibility for other people's responses in so much as you have initiated them into a response. So if you can be deeply spacious about whatever comes back to you, then go ahead. But if you can't be deeply spacious, if you're like, oh, well, I just asked them a question and they got all mad. And then now I have to deal with them being mad. Well, no, you don't. But, you know, as we say on the show, what were you doing just before that? So what energy were you bringing into the conversation? And I'm talking to you manifestors. I'm talking to you projectors. I'm talking to you reflectors and other generator types. What was the frequency that you were bringing into the conversation? And are you giving people enough space to have a clear response to you? Now, here's the best way, the best way as a generator energy type is to be asked yes or no questions and try to ask them with no point of view. So no like rhetorical questions like, hey, would you like to go out for ice cream or would you like to go out for liver and onions? <laughs> you know, just try to ask some pretty spacious questions with no point of view. And if you can't ask the questions with no point of view, then let the person know. Say, you know what? I think I'm a little too close to this outcome. So just for example, you know, husband and wife teams, if you are too close to the outcome, then it might be really great to empower your coach to give you the information um, or give empower yourself to tell your coach that yes, no questions work best for generators and manifesting generators and to teach yourself what a yes feels like in your body. So for me, I'm a manifesting generator and a yes feels very effervescent. It feels very bubbly. It's like from the, from the heart up and it expands out above my head. It sort of feels like, um, like fireworks or like champagne bubbles. That's a yes. And then for me, a no is like from my heart down. It feels like dread. It feels like, um, you know, like gurgly, uh, you know, sort of deflated. Um, 
Yeah. So the more yes and no questions that you ask yourself, generators, the better. Teach yourself how to sway test. Teach yourself how to muscle test. Teach yourself how to get that sacral aha uh -huh and uh uh response. If you are a sacral being, which as a generator, you are, you are a sacral being. And so sometimes you, you may have the spleen, you may have the um, solar plexus, but all generators have that sacral response and it's there. And depending on how you ask the questions, you may have to wait and you may be able to respond in the moment. And so the more you give yourself space to respond, the more likely you are to start to generate these beautiful responses that add to your satisfaction, your deep, deep satisfaction. And so whatever you've had before, this deep frustration, just let it go and move forward into generating your life through responding. And so let me know. Let me know how it goes. Super love you. See you next Monday. Oh my goodness. Thank you for listening to Big Fat Lies with success sorceress and entrepreneurial spiritual mentor, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Join us next week at 3 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Central, and 6 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until next week, Jennifer invites you to laugh at limitation and live your life delightfully by opening your eyes to the Big Fat Lies Show.